Okay, so in the last video, we uh, finished off our function get next waypoint. Um, and now it's time to actually start putting all of this together. Um, the very first thing we need, since we want our camera actually following um, these different waypoints, is we need a way to access the camera. So we will go and we'll create a public variable. We'll just expose to the editor. Um, we'll call it our camera. And instead of making it of type camera, we're going to make it of type transform because we really want to just talk to the transform in the camera. We don't really necessarily care about um, the camera object itself. There we go. And we'll create one more variable and we'll call it done. And we'll give it a type boolean. Uh, and we'll set it to false. So done will control our update function. Basically once we've you know, cycle through all of the available waypoints. Um, we want a way of telling uh, our update that, well, we're done. We've gone through all of the waypoints. Uh, stop doing all the different calculations and, and transforms and or uh, translations, etc. So we will say if not done. Uh, that uh, another way of writing this would be saying uh, if done equals false. So maybe we'll do that. Then inside our update, the first thing we want to do is check and see if our uh, current waypoint is null or not. Because we, if you remember, we actually got our first waypoint. So we'll say if current waypoint does not equal null. And in the case that it does equal null, we'll just say that we're done. We'll say that. Uh, because if we look at get next waypoint, it, it gives us all of the waypoints until eventually it doesn't have any to give and returns null. So that's a good signal to us that we're pretty much done here. So if it's not null, <clears throat> we want to see how close we are to the current waypoint. So we'll use a, a, a distance check. So we'll say if vector 3 dot distance and we need to check the distance between the object that we're moving and the object that we're trying to get close to. So in this case, um, we're going to check our camera, our camera's position. So we'll say our camera dot position. And we want to check the current waypoint's position. So we'll say current waypoint dot position. And if those are less than a, a certain epsilon value, um, then we probably just want to get the next waypoint. So we'll say if that's less than, I don't know, 0.5. Um, again, that's probably, you probably shouldn't hard code this stuff, but it's pretty, it's going to be easier for us to just go ahead and do that in this case. So if it's less than 0.5, we want to get the next waypoint. So we'll say current waypoint equals get next waypoint. There we go. Otherwise, we're not close enough. So we actually need to move uh, even closer. Um, so we'll introduce a new function here called lerp. Um, so we'll say current, actually, we will say our camera dot position equals vector3 dot lerp. And lerp takes a from vector, um, so in this case, uh, our actual camera's position, so our camera dot position, and a to vector, in this case, uh, our the current waypoint that we're interested in, so current waypoint dot position, and finally uh, time, so we'll say time dot delta time and we'll give it some smoothing factor like that. Um, another thing we can do is it would be really cool if as our camera is moving through the scene we have something interesting to look at. So we will use our the look at function that we're familiar with to look at something in the scene. But first we need to create a new variable 
expose it in the editor called, I don't know, thing to look at. And we'll just give it type name object. Um, or, well, we'll just make it transform actually. So now we will use, uh, we'll say our camera dot transform dot look at and we'll throw in um, the transform of our thing to look at. So now as we're cruising through our waypoints we'll be uh, lerping, in other words essentially we'll be our position will be moving towards that uh, waypoint and at the same time looking at the whatever it is uh, we're interested in. So this looks pretty good. Um, let's go ahead and save it. Uh, see if we get any errors. Hope not. That doesn't look like it. And let's go ahead and start filling out the script now that we have stuff here. Our camera. So we want um, to take our main camera and stick it in there. Um, and thing to look at. Let's create. Well, I put a cube in there, so let's just use the cube. Um, actually, let's go back in the script really quickly and make this done variable private because it's not it's important for our script, but it's not important um, for the user to see. So now if we go back in here, there it goes. It's disappeared for us. Okay, let's go ahead and hit play and see what happens. Okay, so you can actually see here um, that our camera is moving a bit quickly. Let's uh, <clears throat> let's go back into the uh, code here and maybe make it a little slower. Let's say, I don't know, 0 0.02. That might make it too slow, but for our purposes it's okay. So we hit play. Okay, so now in the game uh, uh, viewport here, you can see our camera moving very very slowly <laughs> towards uh, presumably this sphere here uh, all the while it's looking at uh, our cube in fact it's so slow it's really annoying me so maybe I maybe point two is better hit play there we go okay so now it's looking at our cube, it's hitting the first waypoint up here, and then it's going to start following the other waypoints. So it hits that one, and then it starts moving towards the other waypoints. Again, very slowly, so you'd probably want to play with that value. Better thing you could do is expose the speed in the editor, <coughs> and uh, be able to change it on the fly to see what looks good. Um, and once it hits the last one, uh, it should just, uh, that done variable will switch to true and the camera will stop moving. Uh, let's see, I think that's about it for this. Uh, let's take a look at the code one more time and just really make sure we understand everything that's going on here. So in our start function, we essentially go through and we collect all of the different spheres in the scene and put them in, our, in an array called waypoints right here. We also keep track of where we are with current index. And then finally we get the next waypoint. Uh, in get next waypoint we return um, the current waypoint that we're pointing to with current index. Um, and then if we get all the way down to the bottom we return null. In our update, <clears throat> we check and see if we're done, and if we're not, and that's default set to false, so this will enter in the first time at least, um, we check to see if our current waypoint is null. If it is null, um, then we're done. If it isn't null, then we do a distance check. So we see how close we are, and if we're within a reasonable bound, in this case 0.5, we get the next waypoint. Otherwise, our camera's position is then moved towards our current waypoint um, using the vector3.lert function. And we also use the uh, lookat function on the transform of our camera, 
with uh, something in the scene that's interesting. In this case, we're using a cube, and we've exposed that to the editor. So we could have it look at pretty much anything in our scene. And OK, I think that's it. This is definitely the kind of script where you could uh, spend a lot of time um, making uh, it do a lot of different things. Like maybe you would want it to loop. So if it was going to loop through these different waypoints, you would create a Boolean variable that you could expose in the editor called looping. Um, and then when you got down to uh, the current index being 0, maybe you would set it back up to 5 again. Um, or back up to whatever it started at, um, depending on how many uh, objects are actually, how many child objects we actually have. So the, I'll leave that as like an exercise for you to do. Again, some of the code I understand, if especially if it's the first time you've been seeing this stuff, it could be very confusing to know when you can call something like look at and whether or not you can call it on a transform versus a position or something like that. But really this is the kind of thing where you learn by doing and you just get familiar. And also if you look at the documentation on Unity's website, you will get a, a really good feel um, for what these different functions do, when you can use them, etc. Um, and there's lots of information on the web about arrays, which we use here. I'll probably have a I'll probably have a series where we don't really do any Unity <coughs> um, game code per se, but we actually go over all the syntax, um, things like for loops that we use here, uh, if else statements. So if this stuff is confusing, um, I'm definitely going to cover uh, all of it at some point. So, all right, hope you enjoyed that.